Um, based on popular demand, I decided to do a little video on capacity planner. Um, my goal is to hopefully make this video not so long so it can help people understand and also be simple as possible. And also maybe I'm going to do like a whole series on capacity planner because my goal is like start slowly and then hopefully get into what we do in PI planning. And welcome back to Aisha Scrum platform. I'm very happy to have you all. And I really, really am happy to share capacity planner. Uh, it's actually not easy to do all of this. <laughs> uh, right type all of this on Excel spreadsheet and doing like my own to ensure that I'm doing like my own uh, capacity planner and from my experience and not related to any company. It's very important I say this because um, what I'm doing in my channel, it's based on my experience and what I've uh, experienced out there. And I'm trying to bring that knowledge to you all. And disclaimer though, it's very important to know that when it comes to capacity planner, it's, uh, it's actually very different in companies, right? Uh, some company you don't use it at all. I know some company like um might ask you as a scrum master, oh, you are free to bring your capacity planner. And sometimes so some of these project management tools, they already have some kind of um capacity planner in there or like hours or days or anything tracker. Azure DevOps is one of them that's very common. And also Rally, Rally also have that in already in their um template. But I know Jira also have a uh, capacity planner, but a lot of companies do not pay for it because I think that's like a extra features to add. And so a lot of people basically, uh, you see Scrum Master come up with their own. Sometimes too, the companies too will give you theirs. Or if you work in a safe environment, uh, sometimes uh, I work in RT RTEs that are so specific with how they want the capacity planner uh, to look like for the PI planning and all of that. So... My goal here today is to show you all simple technique, like basically break it down so simple. So hopefully you all can come out of this, at least understand this, especially for beginner. So that's my point about uh, basically going over this planner. And this capacity planner, I'm going to be basing it off of like basically all type of team members you might have in a typical Scrum team. And also like uh, going back to the baseline of one day equals one story point. Actually very popular when you're like uh, helping to kickstart a new Scrum team where we do not have any data on the team or basically like velocity or any sort of that. Or also it depends to like if the company use hours or they use days. Uh, but my goal today is to base this on the one day equals story point technique. This is basically my baseline of how I'm coming up with my numbers. And hopefully uh, today, I'm just gonna be going like over overall the baseline of capacity planner, just for you to also understand how I'm coming up with all this number, or if it was the difference between baseline and what is the actual, you know. We'll go over all of this in this playlist eventually as we con as I continue to add more, more uh, videos on this capacity planner. So, uh, I appreciate all my subscribers and my new subscriber and my current subscribers for sharing and liking. And please do not hesitate to contact me if you are interested in mentorship or you are struggling at work or you are struggling in all of your interviews and you want that person to basically uh, help you and all of that. And sometimes if you cannot afford my program, uh, uh, I do consultation on the weekends. I can also do like an hour consultation and, and support you guys through your process, you know. Um, and you can email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. You can also call me at 484-767-1979. And please, if you've been finding this content valuable, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> give it a thumbs up, like, and also subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to have your notification bell on because then you get an alert for every new video that I drop. All right, so let's get into this video. So uh, I know like you've seen up here, that up here it's showing um, the quarter we might have maybe in quarterly in a year, the sprint, because I, like I said before, my goal is to use this capacity plan enough to show like a whole, how you can plan for a whole PI, 
But I think that would be too much to start with that. So I think it's best for me to just start even simply about what all this means, all this number means right now in my board. And just ignore this front, uh, this first green line for now. We'll come back to that later. So now let's talk about this first column right here. So this first column uh, is here. It says sprint number. So right now we're in sprint one. Uh, sometimes if you're in your company, you're doing like the first sprint ever, whatever that name is called, you can also always edit and change it to that name. And the date, uh, the duration of your sprint or your, or your duration of a cadence. I know sometimes uh, some teams, they do three-week sprints. Some teams, they do two-week sprints. Some teams, they do like a month sprint. But according to the Scrum Guide, it's best for us to always keep it a month sprint. So let's say like this team is actually, um, it's actually the sprint date's going to start in the middle of the week, right? Let's say this sprint's going to be starting on a Wednesday, uh, which is, um, I'm going to give it 10, 10, 5, 22. So if it starts on a Wednesday, so I want this sprint to end on the, since it's a two week sprint, uh, this is my plan. My goal is to use like a 10 day sprint. It's going to be ending on the 18th, right? 10, 18, 22. So that's my sprint duration. So that's what the dates, that's what it meant by the dates of my sprints. So my sprint's gonna be started on a Wednesday and the sprint's gonna be ending on, on a Tuesday, right? Because if you count the 10 days, minus in the weekends, because we do not count weekends. Uh, if you count the 10 days and subtracting the weekends, you see this is actually the, uh, the date range uh, within the 10 working days. And at the bottom here, this number is giving me the total capacity in story points, right? Meaning like for how the number that will be available after we do all of our calculation here, it's going to show me here, up here uh, the number of available. And as the more we like go back and forth with these numbers, the more this number two is going to change because this number is adding all of this to give us the available capacity for this sprint. So by the time we're done with adding all our math and doing everything, uh, at the end of the day, we're going to be using this number to say that this is what we have available for the sprint, you know. So let's discuss what affect the total capacity available, uh, factors that can affect it, and also why, why can the numbers go back and forth, and also uh, what determines what's your true availability. That you can, your team can have to say that, okay, we have 80 story points we can commit to in sprint one, right? So now the next thing I have in my board is the basically each columns, right? And I label them all differently and I'm going to explain it. And today's video, basically, I want to base this video today on how can you come up with your baseline capacity, like for you to know, like based on the number of people you have in your team, how can you come up with your baseline and your number in your team? And in this case, if you notice, like we have 10 members in this team, I have like developer one to 10. And that means this is team uh, name. Sometimes you can hit in this column, that's where you're gonna put your team name, your team name and your last name, you know? And in this team, we have 10 people. So that's developer one through 10. And in this column, I have uh, onshore and offshore, meaning that I have onshore, meaning people that are working like for me in the United States, people are in the US and offshore people that are in abroad. So before I even like discuss why, and people are working, why do you even have this here? So why do you all think it's so important for me to indicate in my capacity planner if uh, my team members are working in the United States or my team members are working outside the United States? Why do you all think it's so important? Comment down below and let me know what you think. No, just kidding. So I'll let you guys know. Uh, so it's very important for you as a Scrum Master to know uh, your, your developers in your team to know if they are basically in the United States or if they are outside the United States. Because when it comes to the holiday and PTO, uh, actually holiday is very, very important. Because I don't know if you all already know that in the United States, uh, people abroad, they have like a lot of their own different holidays from the United States, own days of holidays. 
everyone celebrate a holiday in different days in the team. So if you have the team members that are not in the United States, it's very important for you to know that as a Scrum Master, so that you can able to take those days off in your capacity planner. So you are not over committing. You remember, I once made that mistake, right? If you look at my previous video about uh, interview question and answer, that I answered that in the interview question. So that's very important. So the on is for people that are in the United States. I have them onshore, that means they're in the United States. And offshore are people that are outside the United States. So I would like to know that in my team members so I can record the right amount of holidays and all those things. And I have that for some of my members and I have some team members that are outside the United States that are offshore. And the next column I have is role, like meaning uh, what is their specialty? What is their expertise? You know, because sometimes in a scrum team, we always like hope for a team that's cross-functional, meaning that uh, you want to have that one team that can able to basically do the whole work without using a lot of outside help, right? So just to be specific. So we want the team to be cross-functional or based on the kind of product you're working or project you're working on. Basically, you have all those people within your team that are able to deliver that. So why do you all think it's so important for me to put their role? You know, why do you think it's so important? Because remember, sometimes as you have your team, uh, some of them might be going through challenges, might be going through difficulties. And if you notice some team members are uh, basically have more experience than the other or someone can help, you can pair them together too, right? And also remember peer programming. We always try to promote peer programming in Agile. We always want to promote peers working together so they all can continue to learn and grow together. And that's how make us strong, right? Make the team strong. So that's why it's very important for me as a Scrum Master to know about the team members, their role, the kind of specific and specialty they have in their own job titles and how they can help the team uh, in case of anything I can call on someone else like oh I see you a Java developer and I know the other Java developer is a junior developer can you basically support and guide him and basically help him through the work and if that's okay by you both sure you know so that's why it's important that's why I think it's very important for me also to know their role and then the next column we have here is days in the sprints meaning that how many days do we have in a sprint, you know? And I put this here because I think it's important for, for us to know this, right? Especially for people that are outside looking at your capacity planner. Because sometimes when you do your numbers, they're like, okay, how do you come up with that? So it's good for me to put that here because some companies, they have 15 days in a sprint, right? That's for three-week sprints. And they have 20 days in a sprint. That's for four-week sprints. Or you can even have five days in a sprint for a, a week sprint. But I want everyone to know that in my in this team, we are doing 10 days, which is two weeks in the sprint. So basically, at all time, hopefully, this is always going to be 10 days, right? But if it's not, which we're going to be discussing later, this is where we subtract that on the holidays or PTO. And then the next thing I have is meeting days. Like, basically, this is not just for Scrum events. It means like all meetings, right? Uh, for most of the time, when it comes to this formula of one story point equals one day, uh, you will always see companies uh, will give the team members each eight story points, which is what I'm sure you all are seeing at the end here is the eight story points. Uh, and they also give two story points for all the other meetings the team might be having, like engineering meetings, scrum meetings, or a dependency meeting, follow-up meeting, any of those extra meetings we do like in the company, they give them like uh, two, two, uh, two uh, points for that. So, and sometimes you can see this in percentage. If we're looking at this in the percentage points, it's going to be 100% in like basically 10 times 10, uh, it's going to be 100% and 20% for all, every other teams and 80% for delivery, meaning 80% of doing the work. But I know sometimes if I, if I say 80 percentage, people find it so confusing. It's so difficult for some people to understand. So that's why my goal today is just to base this by numbers, you know. So basically, we have 10 working days in this sprint, and we are taking two days out of the 10 days to, to now calculate uh, eight story points for everyone in the team that they have available to actually do their work. And mind you, in this case, after doing all of this math, for having 10 developers in the team, regardless if they're a tech lead, if they're a QA, or any kind of different specialties they have, and we take out what the company said about 
two days off for each person for miscellaneous things, meetings, and eight, the eight days for actually delivering, doing the work. In this case, we have the total of 80 available in story points, 80 story points. Uh, so this team baseline, uh, their baseline capacity, if let's say nothing happened, no holidays, no PTO, no trainings, uh, tech lead being uh, given the same point as others and QE, everyone is given all this uh, same thing. Their baseline is 80 story points. Uh, 80 story points, this is the same baseline. And if you calculate, you add all of these numbers, it gives you the 80, 80 story points. Uh, that's for 10 developer. So what names did you see on here that's missing, right? Uh, I'm sure sometimes in your team, you have the BA, you have the product specialist, you have the product owner, and you have the scrum masters. Uh, but all those people, usually we do not account for their time. So that's why if you see a capacity planner, sometimes you have the, the BA names, the PO names, and the scrum master names on there just to show that they are, they are part of the team, but we do not account for their time in the team because they are not doing delivery work. Uh, that's why going back to the Scrum Guide, right, saying that the development team, they, um, they meet together daily to discuss how they can turn the uh, product backlog item into a valuable increment, right? And now we are only accounting for the developers, meaning anyone that's actually doing the work, we are only accounting for their time. So that's where we do not have P, uh, BA, PO, or Scrum Masters. So this team baseline is eight and for and then they have 80 story points for the sprint. And as a scrum master, uh, when you try to account for, okay, during sprint planning, you will tell the team, okay, based on our current uh, capacity planner, no one did not request for PTO. There is no holidays and we do not have any trainings or any support needed. And also, uh, we do not have any onshore or holiday or offshore holidays. So for 10 team members, we have a baseline of 80 story points. So that's our availability. The Scrum Master, would you now coach your team to commit to 80? What do you all think? I hope not, right? So catch me back in my next video. In my next video, my goal is to basically go over all of this and do some little uh, adding holidays, adding PTO, and show you all how this can continue to change based on what uh, the team members are telling you. And that's why it's so important to always communicate with the team when it comes to doing capacity planner or sharing it to the team so they can go in and add their days and all of that. And if you missed my last video about uh, anti-patterns or daily scrum, uh, watch my video on down there. And if you've been finding this content valuable, please like and subscribe to the channel. I truly appreciate you all. And see you again in my next video where I'm going to be doing a lot of more configuration and talk about buffer, like what is buffer. So I'll see you next time.